Hi YouTube, welcome back to WTFRC Cars. So we're going from one extreme to other here. So we've had the really expensive kits, um, the Iris One, HP Racing's D2 Evo, the um, Tamir kit, the 420X. All really high-end RCs, really good RCs, but we're looking at something now that... Uh, I think Dave from RD Models and Gareth that runs the um, racetrack at Mansfield. One of the ideas they've had to uh, sort of make it a bit more affordable and easy for people to get into racing. So we've got the Camtech Hot Rod Kit. And they're running this in kind of a uh, mini class if you like. And it's very restricted on what you can do with the cars. So you basically run just what comes in the kit. And I think it's a 13 tooth pinion, a 27 core RC motor, so 27 turn motor. You can run any servo you like. You've got a choice of body shells and you run the big wing on the back of them. And I think the allowing you to run the brace that goes between the top of the front suspension. I've got to get one of them yet. Um, but basically, you get the whole kit and... You can pretty much get a full RC setup for around £100 plus the radio gear and battery. So let's bring him and we'll have a close up look at this, see what we get in box and uh, see how we get on building it. So this is pretty much how it turns up. We've got a whole load of parts. So let's just move this to one side. So we do get some wheels and tires but these aren't the ones we're using looks like we get a bit of a um, motor mount and everything for back we've got the spur gear you get the axle another few screws this looks like some battery mechanism and some body clips we've got the stub axles up front got the body posts we got what look like more battery clips we got some front bearings some flange bearings looks like that is the drive foot spur gear got little C clips or E clips servo mount track rod set now these aren't adjustable but we do have some different turnbuckles I think the Schumacher ones uh, front bearings by the looks of it looks like a kind of bumper we got some standard front springs Standard rear springs, looks like the front arms, kingpins, and some kind of bolt, and the chassis for it. And then the uh, Kind of interesting bit, this is all you get as the instructions. So, gonna be a little bit different from building the uh, sort of Tamiya cars up and the uh, X-Ray and everything else. But, let's get this laid out and uh, see if we can put this thing together. So, let's see how this goes. So if we get a chassis with all the uh, countersunk parts at the bottom, so I think we're going to need a screw and then one of the locking nuts and it looks like the bumper at least is hex hardware, 2mm but I think we are pretty much all have a place with screws on this so I'm not sure why these screws are as long as they are. I think you're going to need a 5.5mm 
sort of nut driver or something to hold them. But with how cheap these kits are, it's not really an issue. So, once we've got that in place, now it says that we're going to need to put the front body posts on, but they actually look different in the instructions. And I'm not sure which way round you're meant to put this. But looking at that, if we put the bumper on, you then can't fasten the body mounts on. So, let's see if we can mount the body mount with one of these on it. Definitely going to be a bit of trial and error this, because these instructions aren't amazing. So the original body mount holes are there, by the looks of it. But then this chassis has got the extra bit on for the bumper, or what I guess is the bumper. But once you put that on, it covers the holes for the body mount. So it's definitely a, uh, a strange one. I'm not sure how the body's meant to fasten on if you're covering the body mount body post holes up but let's see how we get on with it I think some guys have 3d printed some uh, bumpers as well although I take it this parts a bumper it's the only place I've found that it lines up to fit and it kind of looks like a bumper right let's see what else we've got so next I'm going to attempt to fit on the actual arms and um, we do have these weird little wedge things which look like they're designed to fit in and be able to be taken out but I think we need a screw under each one of these then drop the arm over top and then we should have a locking nut on either side and this should angle those wheels back slightly and these are two millimeter hex this time and we just need to make sure that these are pushed in properly so we get the correct angle and it's supported all the way across. So it should just angle these back. Still not entirely sure on the uh, body post situation. Not entirely sure I've got that right. Uh, not sure if this will show, but you want the thinner end towards the back so it angles your wheels back. And these are slightly recessed, so the kind of shaped for the nuts to lock into. So you can push them in, and then you should be able to tighten them down nice and easy. Certainly a mix of hardware with it. it does feel like it's going to be a pretty solid RC though. I think we could move the post back to there if we need to. So that might be something we can revisit. And looking at that, that's definitely in the wrong place. Definitely gonna have to concentrate on building this cause uh, I think that long one should go uh, in the front of the other one. Which would make a lot more sense. Because it's barely long enough. So, make sure your longer ones go in front. That kind of makes more sense, because these are higher up. Although it does look like it tries to squash these spaces out. So you're definitely going to have to make sure that that shim stays where it should be. 
as you tighten them up. Just make sure it's pushed all the way under. So, let's see what else we've got. So, to best I can tell, <laughs> this is what we're going to need to put these bits together. So, we should start with the kingpins. And we've got to put one of those little E clips or C clips on. Make sure that's clipped in properly. Then it looks like they're going to go on from the bottom. I think first we're going to need one of these in. One of those ball joints for steering. And it says put it into the first hole or nearest the hub and you're going to want this facing upwards and then we have a locking nut on the back of it so that's got one on and then you have the little part that sticks up on the top apparently then we're going to want a spring and there wasn't actually a washer in the packet with any of these, but it has got a little washer. So then we've got to try and get the little E clip or C clip on top of it. So I'm not sure if that's the correct washer I'm using, but it's the only one similar size to spring that I could find. But it does look like we have some suspension. So I just need to assemble exactly the same for the opposite side. So I'll get that done and then see what else we've got. Right, so once we've done, should have something that resembles front steering and basic suspension. I think the top brace runs between these two to stop the uh, sort of slopping them. But let's move on and see what else we've got. So it looks like a servo blocks which I've got to get the servo or just waiting for it to arrive for it. So I'll just put these somewhere near. It looks like we need one of the big washers. That's how the servo is going to fasten in. And then we're just putting these into position from the bottom. So we just get them somewhere near. Looks like they're going to sit somewhat like that. So, see what else we've got. So, moving on to the battery mount. Now, the motor's going to mount towards this side, so I'm going to shove the battery that way because these don't exactly line up with any of the holes. So, looks like first off, we're going to need a couple of these long screws through. Then once we've got them, we need to sit them on. Then you've got the non-locking nuts. So it looks like we're going to need to tighten them up first. So once we've got them on, then it looks like our battery holder goes in, then we're going to need a nut fastening down on either one of these. And these are the locking nuts that you use. So 
So if I just quickly grab the battery, you'll see what I mean. It will just about line up on that one, but won't go through to the other. And if I put it there, it's just going to fall out. Because they're not intended to run the shorty packs, but that's what we're going with. That's what we're running with in these cars. We're also not running them 1S, we're running them 2. Which is why they're going with the 132 pinion. But it, it seems a good mix of the quick enough to be fun, but it's not going to try and burn the motor up every race. And because they're running 2S, it does make them quick enough. Not sure if this is the uh, way I'm ultimately going to fasten these batteries in, but first time I built one of these little Camtech things, so it's all a learning curve. So we should have at least some way of holding the battery in. Let's just try it. Yeah, I think if I put some little foam padding at side of that, don't feel too bad. And the motor's offset anyway, so shouldn't shouldn't affect balance too much. Definitely looks like that uh, that battery's in there, <laughs> so that looks like it's going to work successfully. Right, let's move on. See what else we've got. Right, so this is interesting. Apparently, the ball joint assembly goes in the bottom of the motor mount then we have a 10 mil o-ring that sits in the back then this sits over the top of it and then we have two screws So then we've got two locking nuts. Not sure how tight we meant to do these, or if they're just designed to crush the O-ring. But it then looks like that sits on the chassis. Then we have a screw come through from the bottom. So that's going to screw into the ball joint assembly. Then on top of that, I'm not sure which way around that's meant to go. But then we have an 8mm washer or rubber o-ring. Then on top of that, we have a washer and then we have another lock nut so by adjusting that I'm guessing that is how you adjust your suspension right let's see what else we've got so looking at this now I'm not sure if we it's going to be easier if we just drop this front part off. Because I think we're going to need all three of these screws through the chassis. But then it looks like the centre one, we're going to want a washer on it, and then that, which would make sense because the O-ring sits on it, but 
it does kind of look like it's turn us to put a lock nut on each one of the outer ones. So let's get them screwed down. So once we've got them fastened on with locking nuts, let's see if we can drop this back on. Then we need this assembly. I'm going with the uh, sort of more hollowed out part at the bottom. Seems to match up with uh, what I'd expect. So by tightening that, you should be able to change the suspension. Then I think we're going to need to drop the springs on. Then we're going to need a spring caps. So that's how we're going to adjust the tension on a spring. So then we're going to need a locking nut on each one of these. And you're going to be able to quickly adjust the suspension by tightening these down or loosening them back off. Then we're going to need to make sure that is fastened down. So that's going to need a lock nut on it but it doesn't show putting a bolt on the bottom of it, a nut on the bottom of it. So let's get that tightened down. Yeah, that holds pretty solid now. So we've got some rear suspension. Right. Let's see what other wonders it's got in store for us. Right, so moving on to the rear body mount, what looks like. So I think we're going to have to mount these on first, else we'll not get to them. And we're back to uh, sort of Phillips screws. So once we've got them mounted, then we need to mount what look like or the servo mount. In fact, might be easier getting these on the RC first. So, let's try and get these mounted. I'm going to leave them just a little bit loose so I can spin them around and get them lined up when I tighten the body mount to them. So once we got them somewhere near, let's get one started. Definitely an interesting mix of uh, nuts, bolts and screws. So, we got the rear body mount on. Uh, let's have a look what else we've got left. So, we do have these flanged bearings. So, let's get a little bit of the uh, hoodie bearing grease on them, or bearing oil. Uh, it doesn't actually show us how we put these together, so let's guess from outside. <laughs> So once we pop them in, we're then going to have our axle, no diffs or anything on this, so nothing else to play around with. Yeah, by the looks of that, we just need to force the gear on so it lines up 
with the flats. That's the one. So that locks into position. First time I've built one of these, so you'll have to bear with me. So just so you get an idea of what it looks like, I'm gonna chuck these uh, foams on that it comes with. You could run these, but I think we've got uh, some better suited to the carpet on the track that we're at. And these lock into the actual drives. And they are quite a tight fit. So once we've got them on, we're going to need to put a locking nut on each one. But it doesn't tell you to use any washers or anything on these. So that's as rear wheels on. Now as front wheels you should have the bearings for these. So again just going to put some bearing oil on these. Just helps them last a bit longer. And you should get a bearing in from each side. Not a particularly tight fit in the front wheels. And again, don't show us to use any washers or anything on these. We kind of get in there. So, from the actual kit, we've got the little E clip, we've got a couple of nuts and bolts, we've got two washers and two bolts for mounting the motor, and then we've got a bunch of turnbuckles that we need to build up once we get the servo foot steering. And then we get a couple of these pins to mount in the front to hold these. Shouldn't need them on rear. But I think I'm going to wrap it up there. And then we just need to get some electronics sorted for it. But not a bad little, uh, little build. Certainly uh, a little different. And you could move these posts back to there. And you can move the rear body mounts up and down. There is other options for holding battery, but this is just a really nice, cheap way of getting into RC racing. You could run the actual foams it comes with. You could turn them down a little bit if you want. But just to give you a bit of an alternative, really, to the uh, really expensive IN kits. But let's wrap this one up. So, there we have it. First look and uh, first bit of the build of the uh, little Camtech hot rod car for the uh, new class that uh, Dave and Gareth have come up with. Um, quite interesting, quite cheap to get into, um, not the best instructions that I've uh, had to follow but hopefully if you are thinking of getting into this kind of cheap entry level racing should be a hell of a lot of fun um, and it's nice low budget. And yeah, these are available from uh, Dave at RD Models. I'll put a link in the description below. Thanks again for watching WTFRC Cars. If you like this kind of content, don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit the notification bell. Share to friends and family. And uh, catch you guys again in the next one.